Hi there. So every now and then I get a flurry of emails from people asking me to cover various topics. And one of the most common ones I get asked is about race starts. So I figured it's roundabout time I made a video covering basically how to get the flywheel up to speed as quick as possible. So this is about concept two. It's not about on the water rowing. Okay. It's a completely different aspect when you've got balance and the surge of a boat through water. This is just basically how to brutalize this machine into going as fast as possible from the very start. So I'm going to take you through a couple of ways that I could do a race start. I've got ErgZone running so that I can record the metrics as I go through it. And then once I've found the most effective way for me to do a race start for the 100 meters, I'll take you through how I do it for a 2k and what my pace plan would be. Hopefully within all of this, it's going to give you a bit of an idea as to how you might want to approach a race start. Okay, so the first thing I want to say is that I'm approaching this obviously from the fact that I'm not one of these big heavyweight guys. I'm just a lightweight, 75 kilograms, and I don't have muscles upon muscles to be able to get the power in off the first stroke. I've seen a few people reply to people's questions about a race start saying, um, you just get up to race pace. For someone like me, that's not an option, okay? My first stroke, I can't quite get in that straight up to my pace okay so if i was to do uh, say a 100 meter sprint which we're going to do today then eventually i really want to be hitting around about 130 131 for a 100 meter sprint especially I mean, i'd love to go faster but right now i'm injured and blah blah but that's my point so ideally i'd off the first stroke instantly go up to one minute 31 pace but that's what i'm going to show you here okay so i am going to start this 100 meter row and i'm going to go absolute I bulgingly fast for me okay I'm just gonna get the rate right up as fast as I can do this as a hundred meter sprint to just see how fast I can get into it for you and we'll see what happens and then I'll do a couple more versions of a race start after that and we will compare the three of them okay so I've got our zone running and that's recording what's going on so we can take a look at the metrics afterwards because trust me I couldn't tell you my name during this hundred meter sprint so this first one is gonna be a full stroke from the front and then Continuing on, okay? So in three, two, one, go. So rate-wise, I'm up at 45. Uh. 17.6 or 17.7 which actually I'm quite pleased by to be honest I'm quite surprised that I got that fast that I didn't lose loads of time off that first stroke but let's quickly take a look back at the erg zone metrics for that row now the most important metric to look at is the watts and see how quickly they go up so here we go then 389 to 475 to 525 so that just jumped up really quickly and then actually my kind of average for this row is around about 550 so you'll see i'm kind of maintaining that ish as i get through this first 100 meters now one of the more common ways that you'll see people suggest to do a start is to go half slide three quarter half full okay so you start around about here which is naturally where you'd be sitting anyway and you do your half and then you come in a little bit further. So that's your three quarters then a quick half. And then you get straight into the full stroke. Okay. And that's what we're going to try this time. Now it's a little bit awkward. You kind of have to learn how to do this one because of the, the differences in, in where you are, but I'll try and get it right. And again, I'm going to get the rate right up, try and see just how fast I can do this hundred meters. So in three, two, one, go. So half three quarters, half, and then we're in. So my rate is already been peaked at 48. All right, 17.8, not quite as fast as the original one, but then, you know what, from a technique point of view, it's really hard. I mean, I'd have to do 10 of these, take an average and then compare them. But really what I'm doing is taking you through the variety of ways that you can do a race start on something like 100 meters. So you can see. So anyway, let's take a look at the metrics for that one. Now, remember to look at the watts here as we go through this one. So we start 173, 328, 454, 544. 
that took a fair bit longer to get up to my average kind of 550 watts-ish for this test. Now this third option is the one that I do in races. Now to be honest, I've never done this before in terms of comparing these two different race starts. I'm already really surprised by how fast I actually went for that first one, which I really thought would have slowed me right down. Um, and then how close the second one was to it. So I don't really know how this is going to be. And I promise you, I'm not sabotaging this anyway by going <laughs> slower on the first two and then trying to go faster on this one. This is all genuine attempts. If anything, this one might be slower because as you can tell, I'm a little bit out of breath. I'm only really taking about two minutes rest in between each of these, but they're only hundred meter sprints. So anyway, what am I going to do? This one is about using short, sharp strokes from the front, not half length, but coming into the front, a quick push of the legs, another quick push of the legs, and then I'm into the, into the stroke. So the stroke rate you'll see on screen will go woof, really high, up to like 50 or something, and then I'll settle back down into the around about 45 strokes. But it'll be interesting to see from a what's on screen point of view from Erg Zone, and also my final time, how this one beds in with the first two that we've already done. So, here we go on this version. In three, two, one, go. So you can see I was up at 54. Back at 46. Now that's interesting. So 17.8, that's the slowest of the bunch, and that would have been my preference. So what I'm going to do after we look at the metrics now... So in this one, keep an eye on the watts again, 274, 367, 484, and then we're at that 550 area. So it still took longer to get up to that maximum watts for this row. And I think the time to get up to those maximum watts really is the key difference here. Now it's only fair that I go back to the original one again because there's always a chance that even though I did three of them, which isn't that many, that I had a little bit of fatigue in my legs and that's why that last one was the slowest of the bunch. So I'm going to go back to the one where it was just full strokes in the front to see what my time is like because as it stands, that is the way I should be doing my race starts for a 100 meter sprint. So let's get into this one one more time. I'll just do this one again, I won't do the other two again. Here we go then, full stroke from the start, in three, two, one, go! I think... To be honest, with the 17.5 on the monitor, 17.6 on Erg Zone, I think that's probably quite conclusive that for me, for a race start, that's the one that I should be doing. Which is really interesting. However, there's only a couple of tenths difference, and it really does rely on that first stroke from the front being full power. If you just tickle into that first stroke, then you're not going to get up to your pace of your very first stroke. So you have to make sure and explode out the front if that's what you're going to do. Now, what I'd suggest to you is that you do exactly what I've just done and investigate what's best for you. Do each of those options, put in a fair attempt across all three of them and see what one works best for you. Maybe that that half, three quarters, half, full works better for you, or maybe that the short, sharp jerks from the front work better for you when it comes to 100 meter sprint. Now, the next thing to look at is what if you're starting a 2K race? How do you do your start into a 2K race in order to make sure that you have enough energy to carry on through that 2K? So 2K race starts are all about getting up to your race pace as quickly as possible, okay? And trying to hold it there for the duration of your 2K. There's absolutely no point, though, in going at full guns for the first 30 seconds 
uh, you're up at 130 pace, you're flying, but then you destroy your system and you have to back right off down to 230 pace for the next thousand meters. And then you limp home with maybe a sprint for the last 500 meters. That's not really what you're meant to be doing. Now, the two ways I'll kind of mention for how you might want to pace your 2K are that you get up to your race pace, your projected race pace, and you hold it for the full 2K and you go, woohoo, I finished. Or you have like a quick sprint with 500 meters to go to go a little bit faster. Or my preference is that I go one second faster than my projected 2K pace for the first 500 meters. Okay, so I'm rowing one second faster. Then for the next 1,000 meters, I will back off. So I'm one second slower than the projected 2K pace. Are you with me? So by the end of those 1,000 meters in the middle, I'm one second off my pace. But then with only 500 meters to go, that's when I sprint to make up that one second that I have lost in the middle and hopefully get even more time out. Okay, so what it does, it gives me like a breather, if you want to call it that, um, of one second in the middle. But what it does is it lets me take advantage of something called ATP at the start. Now ATP is basically free energy to your muscles, okay? So it's like, it's energy that's sitting there, it's like supercharged um, energy that will last around about 10 seconds uh, where you're able to really put in a lot more power at the start than you would on the rest of the road. Now I'm still not talking about going 30 seconds faster than 2k pace, okay? What I'm talking about is a sensible amount. So if what I'm going to do today is I'm going to demonstrate as though I was trying to uh, row a 2K at 140 pace, which would give me a 642 k So I, w I would want to do the first 500 meters of that at 139 pace, okay? So how I will do that is the first five strokes of this, I will push really nice and hard with my legs to take me down to round about 135 pace, okay? So a fair bit faster, but not stupidly faster. And then over the course of that 500 meters, I would back off the pace and then I'd end up round about that 140. And then I would, uh, as in I'll be rowing at 140 pace and I'll find that my average for that first 500 meters will be 139, the one second faster I've been aiming for. And then I can ease off another second for the mid 1K if that's what my plan is for the day. Does this make sense? I hope it does. So what I'm going to do is I've got 200 meters loaded into the monitor this time and I'm going to show you how I will do this. Okay, so the first five strokes, these ATP um, fueled strokes, they're going to be nice and powerful. And as we've just learned from that 100 meter test at the front, I'm going to do this with just full strokes from the start. None of these little fake strokes. I'm just going to go full pushes from the front. And then once I get those five strokes done, I'm gonna ease off the pace and hopefully by the time the 200 meters is finished, I'll be round about 139. Now I'll try, if I, remember I'm only doing this across 200 meters, so in order to actually level it off, I'd probably, um, I'm probably gonna end up a little bit faster than 139, but you'll see what I mean, you'll see what I mean. I'm gonna stop garbling and I'll just row, okay? So, five powerful strokes and then I'm gonna ease into uh, just a slightly slower pace to let the pace just back off a bit. Here we go then, in five, four, Three, two, one, go. So power, four, three, two, one. And then settle in to your stroke rate for your 2K and keep an eye on your pace. You maybe wanna to get to your proper projected time which would be 140 for my pace as the time and the distance that first 500 meters counts down. Yeah. So those first five ATP strokes really got my pace up there. I mean, let's put the metrics up again and we'll see. And then hopefully that would then. So the metric to look at on this one is the pace. The first stroke was down at 203, but you can see I quickly get up to 132.7. And then once my five strokes are over, I start to back off the pace. Now it can take a few strokes to settle into the pace that you're looking for, but as long as you don't slow down too much or you don't stay too fast, then you'll eventually get there. And then as this row goes on, I'm settling into a nice comfortable pace now. And by the end of my 200 meters, I've been rowing a little bit slower, yet my my average is still where I want it to be. And then hopefully that would then carry on through into the rest of my 2K. So I then after the first 500 meters, be able to back off by one second per 500 meters 
slower than my projected time and then the last 500 meters I'll hopefully have the energy in me to really go for a sprint and remember in a race situation you're going to have the adrenaline at the start that's really going to help you with those first five strokes anyway because you're going to be like yeah <laughs> and then hopefully the last 500 meters you'll be in a position to be racing with someone and that's what's going to give you the impetus to really sprint or you're going to see your potential pb or whatever so that's kind of how i do a 2k start okay so five uh strokes to really get my time down and now i've learned from that opening thing with 100 meters that that's how i should be starting with the full pushes from the front instead of those little cheeky strokes so every day's a school day isn't it and that's really what this comes down to is that it's down to what works best for you so what i suggest is do the test that i did for the 100 meter sprints yourself take those three options of the full strokes in the front where you really launch out your legs that's the important part that you really push out and then do the the half three quarters half full see if that works for you and then do the what i was doing with the coming in out from the front and going push bush bush so you're like kind of quarter half full or half quarter whatever and see what one works best for you and then you can maybe incorporate that into your own rowing and then when it comes to doing a 2k or something look at how i did that just then with the five free strokes using that free atp energy from your muscles and then settle down to your rhythm but the important part about a 2k really is that you don't try and go too fast too soon sprint the end of a 2k don't sprint the top because you've still got another what six to eight minutes to go and if you've exhausted yourself 30 seconds into that 2k you've got a long time ahead of you to be absolutely destroyed <laughs> so anyway so i do hope that this made sense to you and that you got something out of it i certainly did like i say i'd i've learned how i should be doing race starts if nothing else so um it's good that we made this video together so do take a look at some of the other workouts I've got on this channel and try and maybe use some of these things that we've learned today within them, whether it is the actual 2K plan with the finishing 2K time trial or whether it's one of the other rows I've got up here. I have over 300 videos for you to watch and row along with, so hopefully one of them will work for you. If it doesn't, then please get in touch and suggest what you'd like me to make um, and cover topics. Like I say, this one was definitely a user request to cover race starts. Um, you can tell that I didn't exactly come into this knowing exactly how it was going to work out. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this one. Please look after yourselves. I will see you in another video. Goodbye. <laughs>